Miss G back here reading chapter 11 from The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane. Here he is, the end of chapter 10, being tossed out in the garbage by Lolly. Um, oh, and also reading with permission from Candlewick Press. Have to say that every time. Chapter 11. Edward ended up at the dump. He lay on top of orange peels, coffee grounds, rancid bacon, and rubber tires. That first night, he was at the top of the garbage heap, and so he was able to look at, up at the stars and find comfort in their light. In the morning, a short man came climbing through the trash and rubble. He stopped when he was standing on top of the highest pile. He put his hands under his armpits and flapped his elbows. The man crowed loudly. He shouted, Who am I? I'm Ernest, Ernest, who is king of the world. How can I be king of the world? Because I am king of garbages, and garbages is what the world is made of. Ha, ha, ha. Therefore, I am Ernest, Ernest, who is king of the world, he crowed again. Edward was inclined to agree with Ernest's assessment of the world being made of garbage, especially after his second day at the dump, when a load of trash was deposited directly on top of him. And there he lit, and he lay there, buried alive. He could not see the sky. He could not see the stars. He could see nothing. What kept Edward going, what gave him hope, was thinking of how he would find Lolly and exact his revenge. He would pick her up by the ears. He would bury her under a mountain of trash. But after almost 40 days and nights had passed, the weight and the smell of the garbage above him and below him clouded Edward's thoughts. And soon he gave up thinking about revenge and gave in to despair. It was worse, much worse than being buried at sea. It was worse because Edward was a different rabbit now. He couldn't say how he was different. He just knew that he was. He remembered, again, Pellegrina's story about the princess who had loved nobody. The witch turned her into a warthog because she loved nobody. He understood that now. He heard Pellegrina say, You disappoint me. Why, he had asked her, why do I disappoint you? But he knew the answer to that question, too. It was because he had not loved Abilene enough, and now she was gone from him, and he would never be able to make it right. And Nellie and Lawrence were gone, too. He missed them terribly. He wanted to be with them. The rabbit wondered if that was love. Day after day, passed and Edward was aware of time passing only because each morning he could hear, hear Ernest performing his dawn ritual, cackling and crowing about being the king of the world. On his 180, 180th day at the dump, salvation arrived when Al, Edward was, sorry, salvation arrived for Edward in a most unusual form. The garbage around him shifted and the rabbit heard the sniffing and panting of a dog. Then came the frenzied sound of digging. The garbage shifted again, and suddenly, miraculously, the beautiful, buttery light of late afternoon shone on Edward's face. 180 days. It's a long time to be under trash. So next time we'll read chapter 12.